So, so as I mentioned earlier, a lot of what you do in this uh, lab, we do a lot of graphing. And so when we're doing graphing, we have to, we're going to collect data and we got to graph it. So what I've done here is we do a lot of density graphing. And so I've just put some data, just some mock data. I put the volumes and I put the mass and I'm going to show you how to graph this and also show you some uh, problems that students run into when they use Excel and try to graph. So what you can do is once you have your volume and mass, for example, we can select them all just like this. I left clicked, I highlight the A and B columns uh, with my data. And then you're going to go to insert and we're going to insert a chart. Now, most of the charts that we use, most of the graphs that we make in this uh, class are going to be the first one. It's going to be XY scatter, but just the dots. We're not going to use the ones that connect the lines to the dots. So majority of the time, and it even tells you in the uh, uh, assignment, this is the main graph type that we're going to use. It's just the dots by themselves. So we click on that and you see it, 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 it uh, graphed the data. So we'll, we'll investigate this data in a second, but then what I'd like to do is move the chart to a new page. So then what you can do is you can right click, not right click, this, yeah, right click to get these sets to options, and you click on the option that says move chart. And so we're gonna move it to a new sheet and we'll call it, uh, I'll call it density chart. And so now it moves it to its own page. So you, you just can't submit a chart like this because you'll notice there's no axes uh, labeled, there's no chart title, and of course we gotta do our linear regression. So to add the axes labels, we just go to add, so make sure that, one second, So make sure that you're on chart design and you're going to click add chart elements and we're going to add axes titles. So of course the horizontal one is the X axis. And since we're doing the density, this is going to be volume and you need to put the units. We'll put milliliters and you'll see now it has the uh, volume here on the X axis. And then we do the same thing. We go up to add chart elements axis title now we're going to add primary vertical and this is going to be mass and it's going to be in grams and we hit enter so now we have the vertical axis to add the chart title and again there's multiple ways you can do things on excel this is just the way i do it but if you have a different way and it works no worries so for chart title we're going to put above the chart and we'll say mass versus volume of uh, the widget or whatever we're using. I'll just make up something. So as far as the for, for, uh, format of this, this is good. The next thing you need to do when we're dealing with data that has a linear trend is we need to do linear regression. And so what you do is, let me do that again. You right click on a data point. You'll see this menu come up and you're gonna add a trend line. So when you add a trend line, it gives you options. The one that we wanna use is linear trend line. And you scroll down, you select display equation on chart and display the R squared value. And you see it pops up a linear equation to best fit this data. Now, one thing we have to notice is, is that, let me increase the font size of this. So a common mistake, I don't know if you noticed on the axes, but you see our Y axis goes from zero to 70, our x-axis goes from 0 to 30. 
So a very common mistake that students do is they don't double check to make sure that the data was plotted correctly. So if we go back to sheet one, you see that the volume ranges from five to 27, the mass ranges from 11 to 61. So you'll notice, oh, it did, oh, hmm. well, I stand corrected. It did plot it right, but sometimes, I was hoping it plotted it wrong, but sometimes when you select it, it will plot it backwards. So you have to be careful. So, you know, for example, let me plot this backwards to show you what it looked like. And that was a common mistake a lot of students did uh, during the summer is they just took the data, they plotted it, but they didn't check it to make sure it was plotted correctly. So this one is plotted correctly, but let me show you what it looks like when it was plotted backwards, for example. So I'm just going to switch the axes. Okay, so now what I've done is I've purposely plotted the data backwards so we can see what the linear regression would look like. And I still see it still says mass on the uh, y axis, uh, volume on the x axis. So now when I go to trend line, again we go add trend line, you right click on a data point, we display equation on chart, display r squared. And you'll notice here that the density is very small. So like 0.44. So this should be, you know, uh, you know, you may want to double check here and say, why is our density so, because the density is actually the slope of the line. So whatever the number in front of X is, that's the density of your sample. When you plot mass versus volume, the uh, uh, coefficient in front of the X value is the slope. And this is telling us the density of this substance is 0.44. You know, if this is a metal or this is a liquid, you may want to double check. And you check your X and Y axes to make sure the data was plotted correctly. And as we see, the X axis goes from 0 to 30. Excuse me, the Y axis goes from 0 to 30. The X axis goes from 0 to 7. Now, if we go back to our sheet one, we'll see that, hey, the Y is supposed to go from say 5 to 30, the X is supposed to go from 10 to 60. So obviously this data was plotted backwards, so we need to switch the data on the X and Y axes to get the proper uh, data. So let me do that. So what you would do is, and again, this was a very common uh, mistake uh, in the summer session, was plotting data backwards because they just take whatever Excel puts in the graph and run with it. So again, what you want to do, if you want to switch axes, you just right click. This is the way I do it. Uh, select data, we go to edit, and you see the X values are B and the Y values are A. I'm just going to replace the B with A and the A with B. We click OK. All right, so now you see we have the right scaling for the X and Y axes. Again, we right click, add trend line, make sure it says linear, and display equation and R squared on chart. And so now this looks much better. It says the density of our substance is about 2.27. Again, the coefficient, aka the slope, in front of the X value is your um density of your object or substance 